Hey everybody, I'm talking with Dr. Bill Trattler today, one of our CAKE advisory board members, about cyclosporin. Cyclosporin was one of those pharmaceuticals that I was very interested in in the early 2000s when I started reporting in ophthalmology because it treated the root cause of dry eye, which was quite remarkable at the time. Let's listen in. Dr. Trattler, welcome to the program. Thank you, it's great to be here. Absolutely. Well, uh, you know, Dr. Trattler, today we're going to be talking a little bit about cyclosporin. You know, this is a topic near and dear to my heart because I remember when I started interviewing in ophthalmology in the early 2000s, uh, this was one of those drugs which really treated the root cause of the problem, you know, dry eye at the time. So it was kind of a, you know, kind of a miracle drug, so to speak, at the time, at least for our industry. So I'm just wondering, you know, what do you think about cyclosporin over the years? Well, cyclosporin has been one of the most important drugs for treating dry eye uh, that's ever been developed. It's one of the drugs that is routinely used by patients that have chronic dry eye. It's been, it helps patients who have significant symptoms slowly get better over time. And it's kind of like, I always think of it as kind of that, when I tell my patients, you know, we should all exercise, we all should try to stay healthy. Uh, uh, cyclosporin helps keep the dry eye at a bet, at a nice level and slowly improves it over time. And I have family members that use, use cyclosporin uh, for many, many years. And, and of course, so many patients that use it. So it's a fantastic treatment for our patients with dry eye. Absolutely. Well, you know, in the interval between the early 2000s and now, um, what has been the evolution of cyclos cyclosporin? In other words, what has that been like? We learned so much about cyclosporin. When it first came out, we thought it was only for the most severe patients with dry eye. And we soon realized that the earlier we start treating patients with cyclosporin, the better the results. So you don't want to wait for people to be, have severe dry eye, catch them earlier, moderate, and even earlier than that. Um, so I try to start cyclosporin when I first diagnosed dry eye at the earliest levels to prevent patients from getting more severe, uh, uh, you know, levels of dry eye. Plus, we found it really helps our patients that have uh, various types of surgery. So, like we found, uh, Margaret McDonald and others showed that it helps uh, with outcomes with laser vision correction. So that's been used before and after laser vision correction for many, many years. Uh, it's just been a great medication. It's really made a big impact for our patients. That's awesome. Well, uh, you know, I understand Sequa is a new formulation of cyclosporin. So, could you tell me a little bit about that solution? Absolutely. So again, our original solution uh, that we've had uh, that's been FDA approved uh, in the U.S. here for many, many years is quite effective. But it's always nice to see uh, innovations. Um, and, you know, they did try to make a, a few uh, more innovations around the type of bottle that was being used from vials to a bottle. But, um, you know, Sun Pharmaceuticals came out with a, a more advanced formula that's it's a higher concentration uh, of cyclosporin plus a, a different delivery vehicle to help improve the bioavailability of the, of the cyclosporin for our patients with dry eye. So could you tell me a little bit more about in which patients you would use this particular formulation? Well, I think we're, we're lucky as physicians that we do have a lot of choices for treating our patients with dry eye. So it's not just cyclosporin, we have many other choices. So the first thing we have to do is figure out which patients we feel will benefit uh, from cyclosporin. And there's so many different patients that, that can benefit. And so and once we figure out those patients, then we have to decide, okay, are we going to go with the, the original formulation or, or more advanced formulation? Um, I do have many patients that have, that have been on uh, the original formulation, Resasis, for years and years, and they, they're doing well. So I wouldn't necessarily switch those patients. But if I have patients that are coming in for, with a new, um, on, uh, they have dry eye, I'm for, seeing them for the first time, I simply will lead with uh, Sequa because it's a higher concentration of cyclosporin. Um, and it does have an excellent, uh, I have an excellent experience with it, both for comfort, um, as far as its comfort and its effectiveness. So that is, we're lucky to have both formulations, but Sequa has been my kind of the technology I've been using for new patients that have come to my practice. You know, over the years, I've heard of other uh, formulations of cyclosporin come out. And sometimes I feel like I've heard about, you know, significant, significant types of irritation but, you know, what has your experience been with CEQA as far as, uh, you know, any side effects or is it, you know, does it seem to do well in most cases? What we found out with the original version of cyclosporin is that there's a significant percentage of patients, especially if they have severe dry eye that have significant tolerability issues. It just was too uncomfortable to use. So it often, uh, at the same time, use a topical steroid to help 
soothe the ocular surface that patients could tolerate uh, that version. And, and um, what I found with CEQA is that there's a small percentage of patients that, that can get some irritation as well. It seems to be less, although I have not done a head-to-head -head study. But then also, if you're concerned for a patient because of their level of dry eye, you can actually, at the same time, use a topical uh, a steroid drop that can also suppress the inflammation and make a, a CEQA even more tolerable. Even though it's most likely going to be tolerable, it helps improve your chance that you won't get a patient that has a, a, any type of irritation with the, with the medication. Overall, would you say that patients can benefit from going, a, you know, from going to a higher concentration of cyclosporin from a lower concentration? Yes, I do have some of those patients as well. So if a patient's, again, doing well, I, I don't take a switch. But when you have patients that, you know, their dry is getting worse, and we need to know that as we all get older, uh, dry eye can get more advanced. Uh, also, patients undergo various surgeries or different uh, environments it can make their dry worse. And so in that scenario, if they're already on, um, you know, a topic like a sport and it's not controlling their dry eye, then what, besides adding new medications, uh, doing things like punctal plugs, another option is also to just change the formulation and see if the new formulation would give a uh, improvement in their ocular surface health. Now, where does this leave other treatments for dry eye? You know, we're, we've heard things still these days about uh, other drops, uh, treatment devices out there. So where does this fall in line? It's so important to understand that, that we need to be comprehensive when we treat patients with dry eye because there's still not just one drug that does everything for everybody. Um, and patients can often have some under, other underlying conditions. They could have blepharitis or myeloma gland dysfunction. And if they have that condition and you only treat with topics like asporin, patients may have a little bit more irritation and you may not be as successful for that patient. So as a clinician, first you have to evaluate the patient, look at the myeloma gland secretions, look for scurf on the eyelashes, look at the level of the tear volume, um, and, and do a comprehensive exam to understand where the patient's at. If they have severe, severe dry eye with you know, diffuse staining, just adding in a spore may not be enough. So you need to you know, do all the, we have so many different options. We have punctal plugs, we have topical steroids, um, we have, um, I mean, things that are even more advanced, like a Tagus serum, or uh, there, you know, there's various other technologies that we can use that are for even more advanced uh, dry eye. Plus, you can treat my bone gland dysfunction if that's present as well. So it's part of cyclosporin is part of a whole group of treatments that we have to help our patients with ocular surface disease. Now, Dr. Trattler, you're also part of our uh, medical advisory board for Cake Magazine. And as we've interviewed you over the years, you know, we've talked about a lot of anterior segment topics, but I can't recall interviewing you previously about dry eye in particular. So I'm curious from your perspective, if dry eye is something that ophthalmologists overall are becoming more concerned with as the years go on. <laughs> well, it's, it's a great, great question. Great point. It's not that we're more concerned with it. It's that almost every patient we see has some degree of dry eye. And patients come in, they come in for cataract surgery to see us. And I love cataract surgery. It's a great procedure. But if you don't look for dry eye beforehand, they're going to be complaining and having issues afterwards, whether you're going to be off target with your IOL calculations, or they're just going to have a lot more symptoms after surgery. So you have to identify that before cataract surgery, before laser vision correction surgery. Our retina patients with diabetes and other conditions, they can also have dry eye. So it's I feel like it's almost every patient I'm seeing have, has almost some degree of dry eye. Not every patient needs cyclosporin, but we have to be aware of dry eye, talk to patients about it, and, and provide treatments for them so that they feel that we're taking good care of their eyes. You know, that's a great point. And sometimes we talk to optometrists who wish ophthalmologists would take dry eye more seriously globally. And perhaps with the points that you've made, Ophthalmologists will, because overall, it's going to affect other operations that are critical for their, you know, bread and butter. Absolutely, and I think it's hard because you know when patients come in, they say they're they're sent in with a cataract, for example, their vision's not good, and you're like, I can solve this with cataract surgery. I'm going to make you really happy. You know, it's hard. It's hard to also say at the same time, wait. Besides that, you also have a second condition. Let's work on that too, and it can be distracting for the patient. It could. You know, it could be a little bit of a challenge, but on the end, other hand, when you don't do it ahead of time, after surgery, you pay, you pay the consequences because it does take more visits afterwards. They come in a little bit less happy with their, with their result. Their eye feels uncomfortable, they're having fluctuation in their vision. So as 
ophthalmologist, it's important for us to identify dry eye and treat it and be proactive. Well, Dr. Trattler, thanks so much for joining us on the program today. Uh, really nice to take a little trip down uh, cyclosporin memory, memory lane with you and look toward the future as well. Thank you so much. I love being here. Uh, congratulations, such a great uh, forum that you've put together. Um, and I'm excited always to be able to help. Thank you.